the table. I'm going to ask better questions than you, that's why. You think so? Welcome to Vegas, boy. Have you been here before? Yes. In a professional Once. manner or a non-professional manner? In a semi-professional manner. Oh, I'd like to hear more about <laughs> a semi-professional <laughs> manner. How was um, that? Maybe after the show. Oh, I'd like... <laughs> uh, and, and yourself? Yes. Yes? Me in too. what? In a which manner? Same. <laughs> Semi-professional. Uh, you're the captain now yeah. of the team. How do you go about making that decision? How does that come about? So, first of all, um, we've been very thankful and happy with Marco Royce as our captain. But then he said that he would like to, to step by side to give the opportunity to new players to step into this role. So, then we, we sit down and we, we had some, some talks with the team, with the with the, with, with the players as well. Uh, but then you see Emre here, uh, he is a natural born leader. He has a great winning spirit, a great winning mentality. And especially his, his experience in football, in the world of football, he played for some of the biggest clubs in the world. He worked with very successful managers and the most important, he, he played with many great captains in his, in his clubs and so, this, this mix of being a born leader, having the, 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 the feeling to take responsibility, plus the experience, he's the perfect choice. How uncomfortable does it make you feel having your coach say all those nice things about you when you're sat right very, next to him? Very yeah. yeah, I bet it does. Yeah. I bet it does. Um, it's interesting he brings up some of the great captains that, that you've played alongside. Who in particular would you take inspiration from? I wouldn't pick one. I think it was, um, there were like few Great captains, uh, for example, Steven Gerrard, uh, Chiellini, Henderson, they were Marco Royce for sure. And um, I wouldn't pick just one, and uh, they, had, uh, they were different for sure. And uh, I'm different, and uh, I will pick. It's not the first time you've been a captain, is it? You captain Germany under 17s in the mm. European Championship yes. in the World Cup. So you're the youth team. Yeah. In the youth teams, I was captain, but uh, in the professional teams, uh, it's the first time. And for me, it's a, it's a big, big honor mm. to be a captain from Borussia Dortmund. And, uh, and, uh, what sort of captain do you think you'll be? A lead I by example, a shouter, a dominate the dressing room? <laughs> no, I would say on the pitch, loud. If mm. uh, someone doesn't run... You'll tell them? I will tell them. And uh, off the pitch, I will be someone who, who's listening to everyone, uh, the young players, the older players, they can always come to me. And um, if they have something, problems, uh, private as well, if they have private problems, they can always speak with me and um, that will be my job. I will take it uh, and um, I will be always open for the boys to, to come to me and speak to me. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned some of those captains that you played alongside. Of course, some of, some of the biggest clubs in Europe with incredible fan bases. You think Juventus, you think Liverpool, and of course now Borussia Dortmund with the, with the yellow wall. How do the Dortmund fans compare to, to the others that you've played in front of during your career? To be honest, um, I always compared Liverpool fans to Dortmund yeah. fans. Mm -hmm. But um, after our last game, uh, for me, the Dortmund fans are the best fans in the world because after that defeat, uh, it was just um, yeah, incredible because we lost the game, it was a title race, and then uh, the fans were just uh, incredible, and they just uh, cheered and uh, was behind us. And uh, after that uh, difficult moment for us, and uh, that's not normal, and uh, that's why for me the Dortmund fans uh, are the best in the world. This is part of our story, and what we said, the new season is not starting, it, it, we just keep going. We continue what we, what we built during, especially, this year, in 2023, um, we, we had some great stuff, a great progress within the team, within the team spirit. And th this is now part of our story. We, we, we ho of course, we fought to get a happy end mm. by the end of the season. But this is, this is football. When you watch the game back... Have you watched the game back? No. 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 We, were, would... we were watching it and we could, I couldn't believe you were 2-0 down because you had all the play and suddenly they have a couple of attacks and you're 2-0 down. And that must have been a shock for you at the time. Yes, you, you, you can, you can uh, feel it that, of course, if you, if you concede a goal with the first um, opposition attack, it's never, never easy. And especially if the expectations are very high and the pressure goes up, the, the legs, especially the, mm. the boots, get very heavy. Mm. Um, yeah, but we, 
as I, as I said, of course we watched some moments back mm. because we want to learn from it. Yeah. So this is this is the past. This is something that we all wished to avoid, but in the end, this is part of our story, and so we we're gonna learn from that and we're gonna try to make it better as quick as possible. But as as Emre just mentioned, if you see the energy within the stadium, not mm. only before the game, mm. also after the game. I think this is quite unique mm. in this in this world of football. And so we are ready to, to pay back. And this is with a with a good good um, energy from the start of the next season. Did it give you confidence last season being so close to Bayern Munich? Yes of course it gives you some confidence if you see the last decade. Mm. Um, it was it was always like there have been only one team fighting for the championship and this season I think that not only that we improved as a team and we played some successful football we also created a bond mm. within the city within the club within our fan base and I think that we also lose a bit of this big word mm. and uh, the lose the respect of the big word to become mm. a champion and once you are there and you can feel it and to be honest on on the 33rd match day we win top of the table mm. and now uh, due to the uh, goal difference we didn't made it so we've been so close and if you taste something that is so close mm. make sure that it's going to taste sweeter by the end of the next season how as a leader now in the dressing room do you reiterate what your coach is saying to those players who may have doubts after what happened on that final day no how the coach uh, said i think uh, it's uh, a part of our story and um, I think we will take it as a motivation and we have to take it as a motivation and uh, we were very close but we didn't win it and uh, we have to try it again, we have to start again, we have to work hard for it and um, hopefully we will make it then. And of course you're, you're doing it now without one of your key players from last year in Jude Bellingham. How, how do you go about trying to, to fill the void that, that he's left? It's also part of our story. So this, season, this summer it's Jude, the year before that it was Erling Haaland. Of exciting youngsters coming through, continuing to come through. Uh, it's crazy to think Mukoko is only, only 18. How good could he be? He's also very young yeah. and especially if you talk about the number nine, um, he's playing with the stopwatch because if he's not scoring, everybody is ticking uh, and, and, and counting the minutes that he didn't score. And we try to put this by side and not judge him on scoring goals. Uh, we are judging him in you know, improving our game, in, in, in improving the players next to him. And um, he's, he's on a great, great, great way. And we are really happy that he's part of our team. And how important then is your role with, with these youngsters to nurture them and help them and kind of be on them a little bit? That's what I said before. Yeah. It's like... Um... If they have problems, if they want to speak with me or with the captain, then I will help them. And uh, on the pitch, if they don't run, I will be behind them. I will scream at them. But um, of course, always in a nice way, you know. And uh, they are still young. You, you have to teach them, you have to tell them sometimes. And uh, they have to learn it. As a coach, pre-season, what, what are your main, uh, what are you looking for mainly? from the pre-season? Is it fitness? Is it the tactical side of the game? Um, looking at, you know, you, not, you're certainly not your results, but what, you, what are you trying to develop over this next two or three weeks? Yeah, it's a mix. So it's my second season now in charge. Mm. So that means that we don't have to build from, from, from point zero. Um, we are trying, as I said, to continue. Mm. Our finish is over, but, but the way, the progression is not over yet. So now, in this, in this period, of course, we are trying to to get the team on their fitness level, back to the rhythm, um, to prepare ourselves. So basically we have training time until the end of August. Yep. Um, from the beginning of September with the first national team break. Afterwards, we're gonna play midweek games basically until winter. So this is now the time where we can have loads of training sessions where we're gonna build our fitness to be able to perform for the rest of the season. And tactical wise, we try to remember what we did really well and we try to improve what we have we have to change and then we're going to add not only new players, new input into the team, we're also going to bring in some new ideas and try to build on on the, on the, on the, on the base that we set last, last season. What would be the one thing that you would need to improve on to make you champions? Uh, it's, it's not 
easy to pick only one mm. thing, but um, for sure we have to, to, to improve the amount of goals that we conceded. Mm. If, you, if you just go back and through the last decade, not only in Germany, if you go to the top five leagues, you, there is an average, let's say, minus one, uh, match day minus, mm. minus yeah, yeah, one yeah. in average, um, conceding goals. And uh, we, we conceded 44 goals last season, so 10 goals more than we played. Um, and this is something that, that this is one of the targets that we set for the team to to improve in, 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 in that statistic. But this is not easy. This is not push the button and now we're going to concede mm. less goals. Um, but we've been on a good way now. If you, if you see, especially the last couple of months um, in, the, in the second part of the season, we conceded less goals. Um, but in the end, um, there have been so many games where we had the feeling um, we scored enough to win that game, mm. but we didn't manage to win that game. So sometimes it needs to be enough to score one, two, mm. and even we scored three goals, for example, in Stuttgart, and we didn't manage to win that game. And this is something where we have to grow as a team, where we, we um, have to be more clinical, not only in scoring goals, also in defending our own first our own halfway line, then our box and then our goal. And that really summed up the last game of the season, didn't it? Because you had so many chances and well, they didn't really have that many. Up, <laughs> because they didn't have that, that many chances. It's a, bit, it's a bit nasty, but it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> as I said, it's, it's part of our way. And, yeah. and this is something that we, we, that we have to learn. But it was not only that game. We had a, a game by the, uh, in the beginning of the season where we went 2-0 up until the 90th minute against Werder Bremen and, and we lost the game at home. Mm. And, and then uh, if you see Stuttgart, we scored uh, the leading goal in the 92nd minute, I think, and then we conceded a goal and played 3-3. And in the end, mm. there was the game against Mainz where yeah. uh, this happens. And so we couldn't, we couldn't um, yeah, stop it to, 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 to um, win us the title. And, and to improve it by the end of the season with, win, with a win against Mainz, nobody would talk about it, that kind of games. But now we have to talk about it and we have to improve. And this is what we, what we are ready for. Because you're definitely on the upward curve, aren't you? The, you know, the last couple of seasons, you've been on that upward curve and it's just a matter of that final game. Yeah, if you see the statistics through the top five leagues um, in Europe, we've been re really, really successful in the year 2023. But the problem was that the first part of the season was not on our level. We had to deal with many problems, not only with injuries. We, we have the, the illness of, for example, Zepp mm. And then uh, we lost the two final games before the World Cup break. And then we dropped to, to the sec uh, sixth spot in the league. And then there was a high pressure atmosphere mm. all around the place, in the city, in a, in a, in a, in a training ground and in the, within the club, within the team. Nobody was happy with that. Mm. But what we show that even though sometimes things are tough and feels really hard, we are there to improve mm. and to stay positive. And now, after the end of the season, we are there to improve, even though it hurts what happened on the final day. I feel bad for you that you have to work with the likes of um, Archie Rin Tut. Uh, I've, I've been getting a bit of grief from Edin about my jacket. I, th I think he's okay with it. Just yeah, about. yeah, you're the most confident man I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. You no, know, this is blue. Yeah. But it, it's not the wrong kind of blue. There, there is no right blue <laughs> in the stadium. If you ever write a book, I think The Joy of Winning is a good title. Yeah, but uh, what about uh, some dressing <laughs> tips? <isn't it? laughs> I was like, the sky blue is allowed here, isn't it? If we win. And so I've got to be looking at who's the next Ed in Terzic as well. Yeah, hopefully, no, but um, everybody will find you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Edin, thank you very much. Your eyes, it hurts your eyes, <laughs> some of those. How do you put up with that? To be honest, uh, I love Archie, and I thought this is the dress code at ESPN. I'm a bit No, no it's, 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 it's yeah. definitely not the dress code. That <laughs> nothing, is very, nothing matches there. Very, I mean, very, very, uh, very unique, uh, very unique to, to Archie indeed. We appreciate you speaking to us after every game. What, what's always interesting... I always think from a manager's perspective is that you're right in there straight away speaking, you know, speaking to journalists when you must be going through all sorts of emotions, yet you really have to control those because, you know, whatever you say is going to make headlines. Yes, 
even the, even if I talk about his jacket. Of course, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get it again. <laughs> uh, Is that part. something you've had to learn to kind of control like, over the last couple of seasons? Does it come naturally to you? How do you deal with it? So first of all, I said yes. When somebody asked me to become a manager or a head coach, I said yes, so I know what, 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 what it means. And there are two problems as a coach. The first problem is that I have to make decisions before I know the result. And everybody is judging my decisions after they know the result. Yep. So um, if you know that, it's, it's the first thing that you have to learn as a coach. And the second thing is that um, as, a, as a coach, everybody can get mad with you, at you. Everybody can get angry. Is it the player who's not playing? Is it the journalist, the fans, the CEO? Everybody's angry, can get angry with you. But as a manager, you're not allowed to get angry right. in front of the team. You need to support them. And this is something that you have to find out the right balance and the right mix. Of course, sometimes it's not easy, especially after very emotional games, um, after great wins, after heavy defeats. Um, but this is part of, of, of my job and I, I just try to be as honest as possible. That doesn't mean that I say everything, but sure. I try to be as honest as possible. How, how, how does it feel like, say you lose a game, you've got someone like me sticking a microphone in your face. The last thing you want to do is talk, is talk to us. Uh, how, how do you deal with it and, and how do you not Punch us in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wants to. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh, no. um, yeah of course, sometimes uh, after a hard defeat, it's uh, very difficult to speak to someone. Sure. And uh, of course, sometimes you are there with emotions. Uh, and uh, it's not always easy, but uh, that's uh, what uh, the coach said. We, he chose to be the manager, we chose to be the players and uh, that's our job we have to do it and yeah uh, let's take a look shall we at the uh, opening round of matches uh, in the Bundesliga just a reminder every single game uh, will be live on ESPN plus uh, for your boys of course you're taking on clone that game is at 12 30 Eastern live on price you mentioned it before the the poor start to the season kind of bit you in the bottom come the end in the fact that if you started the season as you did after the World Cup then we wouldn't be having that conversation about the the last game how much of a difference does it make the fact that, as you say, you've had this summer, this is your, your second season with the team, and do you feel that will influence the start of, the, of this season? Yeah, we hope so. We hope that it's going to ease uh, a few things, and especially not only uh, to replace players. Uh, we, we lost many players in the, in the start of the season, many key players, especially in the offense due to injuries. And hopefully we're going we're gonna to build up now uh, as a strong physical side within the next couple of weeks so that we are ready and, and, and um, to, to, to fight not only from, from match day one in the Bundesliga. We have one week earlier, we are, we are facing um, a, a fourth division team in, in the cup. This mm -hmm. is really important for us because we don't only want to compete in the Bundesliga and in the Champions League, especially in the cup. We also want to improve um, our, our results compared to last season. Yeah, and so we, this, is, this is the part of the preseason that is really crucial. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.